Yes, so what's going on, everybody? It's your boy Jay Easy, aka Fresh from the Barbershop, BK the People's Champ, coming to you live with another sports uh, video, man. Y'all already know what it is, man. We got a couple of things to discuss today. Uh, we're going to talk about the MVP race. We're going to talk about uh, some Paul George and maybe LeBron Silas and his haters, some kind of how. And uh, then we're going to talk about the, the Defensive Player of the Year and all that good stuff, man. So stay tuned. Breathe when I come to, hum to, some shoes gotta be 20, man. It's not even funny, they can't. All right, and right off the bat, man, here we go. LeBron getting a chance to silence these haters, and this is directly tied in. Uh, to, to trade rumors and what have you, man. So, as we've heard over the last few days, we've heard that Paul George is definitely out of Indiana after this year. The Indiana Pacers are desperately looking to trade him and get something back for him because they know that if they don't do so, they're not going to get anything for him at the end of the year. He's just going to walk, and, and that's going to be it. He's also said that, uh, he's also come out and said that he, he would like to go to the Lakers if they can get that deal done. He's completely fine with it. Uh, and that's and that's to, to combat some trades that, that were saying that he, he didn't want to go to the Lakers or what have you. So so that's a good thing for him. He got out and getting, getting out in front of it and just letting them know, hey, I'll go to the Lakers if you guys can get me there. But that being said, the Cleveland Cavaliers are frantically working to prevent this. Uh, the last thing that I've seen, I've heard, is they're working on a three-team deal with the Nuggets, uh, Indiana, and the Cavs that was send Paul George to the Cavs, Kenneth Reed to the Cavs, Kevin Love to the Rich Creamy Nougats, and then the Indiana Pacers are just going to get young players and picks. It's just whatever's left over in the deal. Uh, they really didn't specify anything like that, but that's the deal that they're, they're rumored to be working on right now. If that works out, I guess that would work because you got the Manimal, and he's pretty much, he's not what Kevin Love is in terms of stretching the floor, but I think he can give you some very similar numbers, especially with rebounding and just scoring in the paint. Uh, he's probably going to give you more than than then Kevin Love can give you scoring in the paint. But uh, then you got Tristan Thompson, Thompson, the same number of rebounds. You got Paul George that has the ability to just go crazy uh, on the perimeter. And then you got LeBron and Kyrie spacing the floor. I think that might be a little bit better team than what they have. And uh, it might be enough to get them over the top. I don't know. What do you guys think? It's so cold, too tight. The left looks too right. You know what? You right. These bitches can now, the NBA has announced the all-defensive team, and let's just get right to it, man. All-defensive team, you got Draymond Green, Rudy Gobert, Kawhi Leonard, Chris Paul, Pat Beverly. I, five, four out of five of those, I'm going to say just naturally, but we're going to get right back to it. Tony Allen, Danny Green on the second team, Anthony Davis, Andre Robeson, and Giannis Antetokounmpo. Hey, try to say that five times fast. Anyway, Straight up and down, I don't think you can really argue with anybody on the list. Maybe Chris Paul, but a lot of people, who are you going to put there? I mean, a lot of people probably say that you could put Westbrook there instead of Chris Paul, but a lot of people didn't like the way that Westbrook got some of his triple-doubles this year. You know, they felt like he didn't really play a lot of defense. He just kind of gave him a stiff, stiff, you know, challenge and then ran for the rebound or what have you. So I know some people are going to argue that Westbrook may have should have been on this list, but at the same time, you know, a lot of people are going to argue the other way. I really don't think they got it wrong, man. I mean, like I said, the only person that you could really argue here would be Chris Paul, but right at the moment, I can't think of anybody that you would put in his place. Maybe you put Tony Allen on the first team and Chris Paul on the second team. I don't know, but I mean... It seems like they got this pretty right, especially with Draymond Green, man. That guy always comes. He always plays defense no matter what. Love him or hate him. A lot of times you're looking at the at the, at the the uh, Golden State Warriors and you're like, yo, this guy is impacting the game in a way that, that other people just, you know, if, you, if you're not used to watching basketball, if you're a casual fan, you can't see how Draymond Green impacts the game without even scoring most of the time, man. There's a lot of times I look at it and I'm like, yo, this cat's the best player on the floor. And, uh... He, he don't even have any points. He's just out there defending your best play, well, defending your best big man, getting rebounds and calling the defense, man. So well deserved by all of these guys. But uh, who do you think shouldn't have got there? Like I said, the only person I think you could probably argue would be Chris Paul. And uh, if if you're gonna argue Chris Paul, who would you put there instead of him? I want to know. And last but not least, we're down to the MVP race, man. I don't think that there's going to be really any question who's going to win. I really believe that they're just going to flat out just give it to Russell Westbrook. And I'm going to tell you why, because the world is right now obsessed with numbers where you got people on Reddit and you got people that, that really don't watch games. They just watch stats. Uh, 
that's who seems to be voting right <laughs> right now. I'm not saying that that's who he is voting, but it seems like that's where it is. And that's where we are in, as far as basketball and things like this are right now. Uh, right now, the house has Russell, uh, one to fifty favorite, and uh, you know, so you got to bet fifty dollars to win one dollar back. And uh, if you bet one dollar, you get six back from James, uh, from James Harden if he wins, and if you bet one dollar, you get thirty three back from uh, Kawhi. I think it should be Kawhi if you went after the playoffs began because, you know, we saw what happened. They were up 20 points. Kawhi gets hurt. They don't win another game. I mean, it's, it's just that simple. So as far as who means the most of their team, we obviously see that Kawhi meant quite a lot to that team. But at the same time, you could argue that Russell Westbrook with the points that he put up and James Harden with the points and the, uh, you know, the stats that they put up this season meant just as much and that their teams don't even get there without them. A lot of people said that James Harden's team would get there without him and that Westbrook's chance wouldn't have a ch Westbrook's team wouldn't have a chance in hell in making the playoffs without him. But um, it's really a matter of opinion. I, I don't I don't know that you can deny somebody that, that averaged a triple-double on the season um, in this day and age, the MVP. It's happened before. It happened in '62 when when what Wilt had. Uh, let me let me get this graphic up here for you, man. And what happened in '62 when Bill Russell won the uh, MVP, and it was just because his team had won the most games, way more games than uh than Wilt, and way more games than Oscar. I think Wilt was like two or three games above 500. Same thing with Oscar, uh, and you know probably I, I don't think it was the same thing with Elgin Baylor, but. But who knows? I know the Lakers were winning then. I just don't know what their record was that year. But Wilt averaged 50 points a game, 25 rebounds a game. I mean, this is just ridiculous-ass stats. Oscar averaged a triple-double that year, and still Bill Russell won because his team won more games. I think they were like uh, 60 and 20 or something like that that year, which says that they valued at that day and age winning you know, way more than just everything else. And a lot of people may feel that way. So I wouldn't be surprised if James Harden won, but I just don't think that we're winning, we're living in that day and age anymore. I think it's happened once. I don't think it'll happen again. I think they're just going to flat out give it to Russell Westbrook, even though his team was uh, boxing out so he could get these rebounds and do all of that good stuff. But at the same time, he still had to do it. I don't know who's going to get it. Who do you guys think is going to get it? In the presence of the man, your future look better than your past. If you're present with the man, you're better. And that brings us to the question of the day. Do you think the Cavs will be better with the Manimal and Paul George? Or should they try to find a way to keep Kevin Love and get Paul George himself? I don't know, man. I'm impartial. I'm just, I just really want to know what you guys think. We'll talk about what you guys say it tomorrow. And also, do you think that Russell Westbrook really deserves the MVP? Who do you think is going to get the MVP? I think they're going to give it to Westbrook, like I said. But, you know, it is what it is. You guys let me know down in the comments what you think, who's deserving, who's going to get it. And now uh, we'll just go at it tomorrow, man. But I'm out of here. Till next time. It's your boy, Jay Easy, a.k.a. Fresh from the Barbershop, BK the People's Champ. Holla! 360 out this mug.